So what is theopoetics? Well, its origins were at the end of the 1960s in some conversations that were revolving around the Society for Arts, Religion, and Contemporary Culture. There, some of the people involved were Stanley Hopper and David Miller and Amos Wilder. And they were friends with poets and artists and architects and all kinds of folks who were asking questions around the intersection of creativity, the arts, and theology done in an American flavor. And there, Stanley Hopper came up with this idea, and later on it was followed up by a book by, called Theopoetic by Amos Wilder. And in its early conception, Theopoetics was about the production of Theopoetics, that's a plural noun, making of a Theopoetic plural. They were worried at the end of the 60s, amidst all of the death of God theology, that Christianity in America, as they knew it, was coming to an end. And so the necessity was to reinvigorate it, to uh, give it new vibrance, to allow it to be spoken in words that address people more powerfully, develop new metaphors, new ways of talking. They wanted new theopoetics, new sermons, new hymns, new theologies, ways of talking about theology that are rich and vibrant and deep with meaning and re-meaning as opposed to form, kind of ridden, rigid theologies. As opposed to a logic of God, they wanted to invite people into the poem of God. Later, um, people who do process theology and uh, work with Whitehead pointed out that Whitehead, Alfred North Whitehead, says that God is the poet of the world. And they come to theology from their own angle through process theology with that same insight that there is a way of viewing the world that is in flux, rich with meaning the way a poem can fluctuate with meaning depending on when you read it and who reads it. Myself, though, I tend to think of theopoetics not so much as a noun, but as an adjective. So theopoetics is the study of perspectives that are theopoetic, of texts that are theopoetic. And the invitation that I want to call out is for people to begin to read the world, not just sermons and hymns and theologies, but the world around us, the flesh we live in, the buildings that we build, and the food that we eat and see it through that lens of the divine eye. To say, yes, God is the poet of the world, and I read this poem, and this is its meaning to me. Rather than a, a rigid hermeneutic or a theological position that is dictated by propositional logic, the invitation is into the stream of this Christian tradition upon which we can immerse ourselves and experience the divinity of God, experience the world as something crafted and something beautiful and mysterious that we cannot propositionalize, we cannot logically articulate or prove, and yet we experience nonetheless. Theopoetics for me, it comes from this root of theos in the Greek god and poesis, not poetry making, but making itself. Theopoetics is the way that we make God known, particularly through language. And I think that when theopoetics is functioning in a text, it simultaneously draws the reader more deeply into the world that is there and simultaneously pushes them back out into the world from which they came, but with new vision and new eyes and new hope and new vibrancy. And my hope is that there are ways of articulating how it is that God is in the world that makes place for this creative act, for this artistic act, for this transformative act, which pushes people out not with more answers and more certainty, but with greater question greater hospitality, and greater invitation to those at the margins to have their voices be heard so that what God is speaking to all corners of the earth can be heard and uplifted in this kingdom as it is built on earth.